always leave food out for Santa. Written by Lady Spookaria and narrated by Lady Spookaria and featuring Mad Chatter. Ever since I was little, we've had a family ritual we would do on Christmas Eve. My mum would cook the turkey and we would open up a single Christmas present. I'm not sure how it started. I think it was because I was annoying my parents and just wouldn't go to bed. The house would smell like delicious turkey and mum's freshly baked cookies. Oh, also, I live in Australia so our Christmas takes place during summer rather than winter. After we finish putting up the Christmas tree, my parents would insist that we leave some treats out for Santa. In the morning, we would rush into the dining room to see what was left by Santa. We would leave out some cookies, a sandwich, some turkey and some chocolate. Come morning, bites would be taken out of the food. We also left two glasses, one of chocolate milk and the other with beer. My dad used to joke that Santa couldn't drink all the beer, just in case he would crash the sleigh. Oh, and we needed to make sure to leave a carrot out for each of the reindeer. The house would be decorated with a wreath at the door, a Christmas tree, and our ornamental fireplace would have the iron-coated chimney screen removed. Then we would hang the stockings up, each stocking marked with our name. As we got older, the traditions were greeted with less and less enthusiasm. All my siblings and I had better things we would have preferred to do. One year, we didn't even bother to put up the tree, or the wreath, or organise the chimney. Christmas and the holidays didn't seem to have the same meaning anymore. But Mum still cooked her turkey and baked her cookies. And of course, Dad left it out for Santa. <sighs> but things changed. When I was 15, it was my responsibility to leave food out for Santa. And I wasn't interested in Christmas anymore. And the rest of my family didn't care so much. Except for Mum. All my siblings were older, so we'd been drinking on Christmas Eve and we were hanging out with our significant others. Since I was the last one awake, I had to leave the food and drink out. Why bother? Santa wasn't even real. It was probably Dad just having a late night snack. I woke up to a distinct chewing sound. The aroma of turkey and cookies filled the air, and I figured I may as well leave it out. Better do it late than not at all, right? I groaned, stretched, and finally got up. After cracking my back, I stumbled through the hallway and tried to get the light. Odd. It didn't work. The house was quiet. Too quiet. Oddly, I couldn't hear any snoring. My brother's boyfriend snored so damn loud. I couldn't hear anyone else snoring. I reached to flick on the dining room light. And it didn't work either. Ah, stuff it. I kept walking along the cool tiles of the kitchen and groaned when my foot touched something warm and wet. Ah, I groaned. I lifted my foot and hobbled along to reach for a paper towel. Ah, fucking gross, I murmured to myself, wiped the liquid and reached for the light switch again. <laughs> Naturally, it didn't work. I dragged my foot, tried not to run it along the floor, and turned on a different light. I hoped I hadn't stepped in vomit or worse. As I looked at the paper towel in my hand, blood. Wait. I stared down at the blood. My grip tightened and I heard a noise from the hallway. Mom? Dad? I called out, and only silence greeted me in response. I looked into the kitchen. 
Now with some light I could see blood smears coating the walls before whoever or whatever was dragged outside. I ran to pick up my mobile phone. There was no signal. We didn't have a house phone anymore. First, I headed towards my youngest brother's room. I opened the door just a crack, enough to see inside. It was quiet and my brother wasn't there. Where was everyone? I rushed towards my sister's room and did the same. Again, nothing. She wasn't there and there was no blood. I kept walking, this time heading towards the front of the house, and I checked the last bedroom besides my own. My parents' room. The door opened slowly. It creaked loudly as it did so. My heart rate began to rise. An uneven beat from a heart murmur. And in the distance, I saw a large, shadowed figure that stood over a fallen body. Whoever or whatever it was, it towered over me. There was a loud, distinct chewing sound in the background, and the figure froze. Slowly, it turned to face me. The eyes glowed like a beast, and a rumbling laugh could be heard. My hand rested on the doorframe, and now the figure stepped into the light. I got a chance to see him. The blood leaked down his grey beard, and it was only now I realised the colour of his clothing came from blood. Areas with older blood were brown rather than the new shade of red. This... This was Santa? He bowed. <laughs> I have to say, I was surprised there were no cookies and a nice cold beer offered to me. The gruff, growling voice addressed me. I stared. The figure continued, his arms behind his back as he began to pace around the room, and he had a concerned, almost fatherly expression on his face. I know there are different ethics these days. However, it is rude not to give something that you promise. An oathbreaker is always frowned upon. He continued before I could answer. You see, it takes a lot of energy to fly around the world and give presents. A simple meal is such a small, polite thing to do. As he spoke, the aroma of blood was overwhelming. My eyes had finally adjusted to the light, and I noticed my father's face had been torn off to expose the skull underneath. Pieces of flesh lingered in Santa's beard. My... My father's chest had been cracked open. The ribs peeked through the skin and the organs had been removed. Seriously? He began, clapped and smiled. It would have been homely and welcoming if... I must simply, I simply must have the recipe for those cookies. They were absolutely delicious. I, uh, I'll give it to you. Why, why did you kill my dad? I spat it out and pointed at him. He made a... Hmm? Sound and turned, almost as though he forgot the devastation that had been brought to my life. Oh, oh, that you see. Payment. That. That, you see. Payment must be given or I would take my pound of flesh so to speak. I think that one may still be alive and... He said, walked towards the body and reached into the chest cavity. Poking it gently, there was a loud squishing sound, and he frowned. Hmm. Not anymore, I'm afraid. Now, next year... Santa said, walked over and took my chin in his hand. The aroma of flesh and old blood filled my nostrils, making it difficult to breathe. I stared up at him. Now you know. 
leave out a tasty present for me next year. In fact, every year. I want you to leave out more and more food for me. You have awoken my appetite. <laughs> <laughs> he warned and looked over his shoulder at me as he stepped out of the doorway. The reindeer were absolutely ravenous tonight. He strode out of the house into the backyard. I ran after him into the backyard to see the reindeer feasting like wolves on my siblings and their partners. The backyard was covered in blood and entrails. Rudolph's nose was red from all the blood. The sleigh flew into the air before it disappeared into the night, and I was left with the corpses. I still don't know what happened to Mum. Every single Christmas since I was 15, I have always gone out of my way to leave food for Santa. I am now in my late 30s and I decided not to have children so the oath dies with me. I haven't told my extended family about what happened or why. All they know is Santa gets a feast and I go overboard with it. Roast meats, chocolate, cookies, and everything I could imagine. I would sit at the kitchen table all night and wait for him, ready to defend my family if the worst occurred. One night I was sick, and I didn't add more food to the table that year. I got lazy and... Santa took one of my ears as a warning. So learn. Learn from mine and my family's mistake. Always leave food out for Santa. Thank you for watching this spooky Christmas tale. Don't forget to check out my guest, Mad Chatter, and subscribe if you enjoyed his contribution. His links are available in the description below. This video was made with the support of my Patreons. Stay safe, my little spooklings. And remember, I'll be watching you.